Hello and welcome. You are looking at the Chapter 9 Practice Test Solution Guide. Now, these are so, here are some funny things about this. Um, I have not seen this yet. So, I, the most I've done was I've taken the problems, I cut them up and spliced them into these pages. I have not taken this practice test yet. So, here's the other interesting thing. It is 12.33. My, the bell rings for 5th period to 6th period at 1.20. So, I have less than 50 minutes to do a test I have not done before. You'll be walking in. You have already walked in with the same environment, and you're watching the video thereafter. So we're kind of doing it together for the first time. Now, I don't have any notes with this, nothing accompanying it. Um, if you want to look at anything that we've done in the past, you can take a look at, uh, I think it's bit.ly slash uh, probability review. That was leading up to the quiz. That was a week in review. And the things it did not cover to my knowledge, definitely did not cover binomial probability. Um, that might be it, actually. I think everything else we've kind of done. The binomial expansion stuff has, I think, been the only new stuff. So um, I'll talk through that as I go, but time is short, so I'm going to get started. Um, number one, <laughs> okay, how many ways can six elves line up to assemble toys for the kids in Burlingame? So there's happy, grumpy, Dwarf, bashful, no, no one's not dwarf. Oh, you know, they're not elves, they're dwarves. But anyway, there are elves. Okay, six elves. So there are six of them, right? Six of them, order matters. You're going to choose six slots. That's also six factorial, as I've talked about before. Or six times five times four times three times two times one without the calculator. Uh, one, two, six, 24, 120, 720. 720 different ways that they can do that. I'm not sure if these kinds of questions are allowed, because as I recall, it had something to do with religion, this and that, and I don't know if elves are... Anyway, <clears throat> number two, you are trying to assemble some outfits for your upcoming holiday party. See, there you go, holidays, okay. Holiday parties. In your party wear collection, you have five skirts, three top six sh shoes, and two sweaters. How many party outfits can you assemble? So I have five, well, not me. Oh, okay, sure. I have five skirts. Three tops. If I just arrange the five skirts and three tops, I can do skirt number one with top number one, two, and three. Skirt number two with top one, two, and three, etc. That'll give me 15 different ways just there. Now I try my shoes. Uh, all my shoes right there and my two sweaters. You multiply all of them. Right? Uh, 15 times 6 is 90 times 2 is 180. So 180 different ways. And I don't know if people look at things this way. If they're like, as long as I have these things, there are how many different unique ways? Like, you're dressed for the school year, right? Like, essentially, I know some people will go like, I've seen that top before, or you know what I mean? But you're like, yeah, but different pair of shoes. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, that's true. So, you know, I don't know if people do it that way. Anyway, number three, a die is rolled. I thought we were supposed to say number cube. Obviously, either <laughs> this practice test is outdated, or I'm not sure what. Find each probability, P of 3. I assume that means probability that, that you roll a 3. Um, I did this. I'm, I'm only going to do it once. I might do it for the whole thing. Your whole set is 1 through 6. And some of these things, look, you have to know what a standard die has. So it has 1 through 6. So there are 6 possible ways. 6 total. Remember, probability is desired over total. And the one we're looking at is 3. There's just one way to do that. So your answer to this one is 1 out of 6. Part B, even number or divisor of 6, meaning a, number, a factor of 6. So even number, I was going to say 1, 2, 4, and 6, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. What you have to do here is eliminate anything that's a repeat. Right? So technically, what, what you would do in this math is you'd say 3 out of 6 plus 5 out of 6, which is 8 out of 6, and then you have to take away the ones that are repeating. 2 and 4 repeat. And 6 repeats. And 6. So you have to, whoops. So you have to take away 3 out of the 6 that are also repeating, which technically all of the, all the even numbers are also those. That's why they're there. And that ends up being 5 out of 6. So this one is 5 out of 6 right here. C, prime or even? 
Same idea, if you list the subsets, you can see which ones repeat if you'd like. I mean, this is an idea. This isn't something that I've asked you to do. It's not a way that you should do it or anything. It's just your perce I want you to be able to perceive it. 2, 3, and 5 are the prime numbers. Not 1. 1 is not a prime. Or 2, 4, and 6. So you see that this becomes 3 out of 5, or 3 out of 6 plus 3 out of 6. The repeat is 2. We're going to take that away. And you get, as you should, 5 out of 6 there. Get rid of that. That's not there. 5 out of 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are the evens or primes. Okay. Number 4. The DMV is making holiday license plates. Again, holiday. I get this must... I wonder if they're all holiday. <laughs> they will have three letters followed by three digits. They need to end with an even number and start with S. Snowflake, of course. No repetitions allowed. I, this must have been during winter break or something. Or before the uh, winter break. No, no repetitions allowed. So what's really interesting is there was one example that I gave to you guys in class where I did not allow repetition. Since then, we've had only license plate problems where repetition has been allowed. Now, when I'm going back to teaching it to you again, we're once again looking at a problem where repetition is not allowed. Okay, this is hilarious. I'm getting a phone call from some spam guy. Listen up. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Sir? Hi. There is an error in your computer. Your computer is not working properly, sir. That's you know, why I called you. Okay? Okay. I'm busy right now. Can you call back? Uh, when should I call you back, sir? Uh, later tonight. Okay? Later tonight. I'm at work. Okay, um, I have to go. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, this is not going well in this video. I really should cut that out, but I probably don't want to. Okay, uh, DMV, hey, you know what? They waste my time, I waste your time, and it's circle life. Next time you waste their time, okay? I'll give you the phone number that they called from. It was from Washington. DMV is making holiday license plates. Uh, let's see. Okay, no repetitions allowed. All right, so the idea here is um, it's easier if, really, it's easier if you kind of spell out all the lessons. So three letters and three digits. So six spaces, right? Um, in the first space, it's easy to say that, well, okay, it has to start with an S. There's only one possible letter that you can use here. After that, it says three letters followed by three digits. Um, the next one are two more letters. Okay, uh, here, let's do the even number thing as well. Even number... Even numbers are two, or z I think zero counts. Zero, two, four, six, and eight. So there are five possible even numbers. Okay, so here's what we're going to do with this. You have to, um, as far as letters go, here are the letters, here are the numbers. As far as letters go, S has already been used, and we cannot repeat and use S again. We can use any of the other 25 uh, letters there as our next one. Okay, so although 1 has been used there, we cannot repeat, so we have to use A through R and T through Z, anything through there. After that letter's been used, we have another one that we can use there. There are 26 letters, and S has to be used first. Even number has to be used last. After we understand that, you know, once we understand the principle, once a, once a number is used there, you only have a selection of 9 to choose from here. Remember, like when we do this, we have to fall under the assumption that we for sure used an even number. So we have to know, we have to assume that no even number has been used yet in this case. Once it's been used, you have a possibility of 9 and 8 thereafter. Remember, your digits are 0 through 9. So you can do that. So go into my calculator. And let's see, it's 21600 ways. Um, so there's your answer there. I'm assuming. I'm going to be done in time for this practice test by 120. That's why I'm okay with all these stoppages and stuff, talking you through it. This is really where I want you to feel comfortable and not rush during a test. The time that I take should be the time you can take as well. Even taking phone calls, man. I, come on. Um, I don't even know what he said. Probably because I muted him, muted you, and I don't know. You are hired to call people to sell Tupperware for your holiday job. I, I, man, holiday. How many seven digits... 
telephone numbers. How many seven-digit telephone numbers can be formed if the first digit is not zero and no repetition? These are the number of calls you need to make for your minimum wage. That stinks. Seven-digit telephone number. First digit cannot be zero. That means you have one through nine to choose from. So you have nine options to choose from there. The rest of them, let's see, seven-digit telephone, first digit's not zero, and there's no repetition. So one of these is, could be zero after that. So after that, you have possibility of nine to choose from there, then eight, seven, six, five, four. If you wanted to write these, by the way, in a different format, here's how I would have done it. I would have said, in my first slot, I have nine, well, here, it's 2P. I have nine pick one. Right? I have the ability to pick out of any of these. Uh, that's not zero. And then I have nine more numbers, and then I can pick um, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. That'll give you the same amount. So I'm going to do that way instead. Nine pick one is nine. And then times nine pick six. And that gives me five, four, three, or four, five, four, four, three, two, zero ways. That's how many calls I need to make for minimum wage. Get out of here. I'm going to double check, times 5 times 4 gives you the exact same number. So both ways will give you that. Same way with this, too. Before I had on top, or here, I had 1 pick 1 times um, 25 pick 2 times 9 pick 2 times 5 pick 1. That would have given you the same thing here. Number 6, hole puncher was in the way. Your friends are putting together a committee to plan a holiday party. There are 20 boys and 15 girls in your group. How many ways can you form a planning committee with five boys and five girls? You have to kind of get the sense that here order doesn't matter, right? If you have these five boys, it doesn't matter what order they are picked. It matters that you have those five boys. So this is going to be combination. Okay. So when it comes down to that, you have the 20 boys. You're going to choose five of them. Multiply that with 15 girls. You're going to choose five of them as well. So I'll just go ahead and compute that right here. 20C5 times 15C5. That's going to give you 46558512. That's a lot of ways, man. So your hope, like if you're a guy and your hope is, I hope I get my four guy friends and then these five lady friends. Um, yeah, good luck. There's one in that many ways that it's going to happen. <laughs> okay, number seven. A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. Find the probability of getting. So, um, the coin is tossed and die is rolled. These are both mutually exclusive. And in mutually exclusive events, when you are finding the probability of getting one and the other, um, you, you, uh, you, uh, whatchamacallit? You multiply them. Sorry, I'm seeing something broken on my... Thing. Okay, you multiply them. Um, so the probability of getting head for coin is 1 out of 2. Probability of getting divisor for 8, let's list them. Uh, divisor for 8 is 1, 2, 4, and 8. So 8 is not one of the numbers you can get. So it's going to be 3 out of 6, so half of them there. Half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So 25% chance that you will roll divisor of 8 and land on heads. Tail and even. Okay, same idea. Tail is one half probability, theoretically speaking. Even is two, four, and six. That's also three out of six. So once again, you get one out of four. Not too different there. Head and factor of 20. Okay, same, same idea. Head, one out of two. Factor of 20. There's one, two, four, five, ten, and twenty. Ten and twenty are omitted. You can't use them. So, here's kind of one of those given things. You remember when we were talking about given? Like, what's the probability uh, given this, whatever. Like, what's the probability you select these numbers given that you're only looking from 1 through 6, right? I'm only looking at 1 through 6, so I'm not doing this. I, I'm doing this out of 6. I'm not doing that out of 20. I'm just looking at the numbers that are 6 or less between 1 and 6. So, that's 4 out of 6, which is 2 thirds, which gives you 2 over 6 or 1 third, whoops, which equals 1 third. Yeah. 
Number eight. The table below describes student body at Burlingame High School. If one of the 1,033 students is randomly selected, I think this is number nine. I thought this was part of the other problem. See, I really didn't look at this. If one of the 1,033 students is randomly selected for the Holiday Elf mascot to do stunts in the Holiday Rally, find the probability that the person is a boy or a junior. Okay, if one of the one, th so totally these add up to 1,033. So these numbers, they break up here, the total freshmen, total sophomores, juniors, and seniors, total boys and total girls. So very interesting. One of 1,033 students randomly selected for the da da da. What's the, find the probability that the person is a boy or a junior. So what I'm going to do is take the probability that you are a junior. So probability of junior will be 136 over 1,033. So equals P junior. And then I'm going to add probability of boy. So probability of junior is 136 over 1033. Probability of boy is 530 over 1033. Okay, now what I have to do is take away the probability that you are a junior and a boy. J and B. The reason is because I have counted those people twice, right? These, these 64 have been added into the boy number of 530 and the junior number of 136. So I have to take out another 64 junior boys because I added those people twice. So in adding that, let's see, take that away. 136 plus 530 is 166, uh, 666, believe it or not, minus 64 is 602, 602 over 1033. I'm compelled, to, I believe 1033 is a prime number, but I'm going to try and reduce that. And I'm going to give you a, a decimal as well to make it look a little bit better. It changes to a fraction. Okay, it does not. So the decimal is about... 0.583, that's about 58.3%. So the probability that somebody that you select at random to be a holiday elf mascot, probability of it being a boy or, or it being a junior, right? It can be either. Like if you select some person named Tracy and that person is a junior, and, or, or some boy named Connor and that person is a freshman, it doesn't matter. That probability still applies in the same way. 602 of them are boys or freshmen. Uh, boys or juniors or junior boys. Okay, number nine, I believe that is. Find each of the following. Five, two. That's not a fraction with parentheses. That actually does mean five, choose two. And if you were to do this without a calculator, it's five factorial over two factorial times five minus two factorial. Which is five factorial over two factorial, three factorial, which is five times four times three times two times one over 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now notice that 3 times 2 times 1 repeats. They are mo common multiples. They can cancel out. So this becomes 20, 5 times 4, over 2, which is 10. Or you can literally type 5 choose 2 in your calculator. And you'll get 10. Just want to make sure that you kind of cover all of your bases, that you know for sure what's going on on that. 3 factorial times 2 factorial, that is... 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. It's all that down there. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12. So that's going to be 12. 0 factorial is 1. I still haven't looked at what, I still haven't looked up why that is. Like, um, and once again, like, I know why it needs to be, but I don't know why it actually is. There, there's a difference between the two. I, I'm not seeing the reason behind that when they created this shorthand rule for multiplying down your numbers. Um, I'm not seeing it. I know why it needs to be, though. All right, 8 factorial, 5 factorial. Same idea. This time I'll do it mentally. This is 8 times 7 times 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. This is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 will all cancel. All that's left here is 8 times 7 times 6. 7 times 6 is 42. 42 times 8 is 336. I'm trying to do that in my head. 4 pick 2, without a calculator, is 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial. So that's 4 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1, 
which is 4 times 3, which is 12. Finally, 6 choose 3, uh, 6 factorial over 3 factorial, three factor uh, 6 minus 3 factorial, which is 3 factorial. 6 times 5 times 4, 3, 2, 1 cancel out, but there's still a 3, 2, 1 over here. So this is 6 times 5 times 4 over 3 times 2 times 1, pretty interesting. To keep reducing this, 6 over 3 is 2, 4 over 2 is 2, so this is 5 times 2 times 2, which is 20, uh, divided by 1, which is 20. So I tried to do those without calculator to kind of say, yeah, it's possible. Like, you can do it. Okay, see, so, yeah, so right now I'm on the back half. Now, granted, this is, these are longer. Uh-oh, we'll see. Um, I'm on the back half, but you can see I'm still not halfway through the period, and I started late, and I took a phone call. <laughs> All right, expand here. So, this, so these are new things. So these things I guess I do have to talk about a little bit. Um, Expanding here, we, we talked about Pascal's triangle, and if you don't know what it is, is you can you take ones, so a few, and then you start adding in between to see what the numbers are in between, like this. Um, this reveals a lot more things than you would know. I showed, I think I showed one, I think I showed seventh period, a few different cool things about what Pascal's triangle has in it. The only thing we're using it for right now is combination stuff. And I'm going to go down to this number right here. You also realize that it's symmetrical. And the closer you are in the middle, the more ways you can choose something, rearrange something. So this is at levels 0, meaning 0 choose 0. Here's 1 choose 0, 1 choose 1. And here's the choose 2s, or two, 2 chooses, 3 chooses, 4 chooses, 5 chooses, 6 chooses, whoops, 6 chooses, and 7 chooses. Right there. The term expanded raised to the zero power, you'll have one term. One, you'll have two terms. Two, you'll have three terms, etc. So to the fifth power, we'll have six terms here. The first term starts off with five, choose zero. X will be raised to the fifth power. I think you know this through patterns. X raised to the fifth power, Y is raised to the zero power. These two degrees should add up to five. Plus five, choose one. X will now decrease one um, degree. One, one less factor of x, one more factor of y. Plus 5 choose 2, x decreases one factor, y gains a factor. Plus 5 choose 3, and you keep going until you get to 5 choose 5 and x to the 0. Uh, whoops, x squared, y cubed, keep going. Plus, I wish I gave myself a little more room. 5 choose 4, x to the first, y to the fourth. Plus, here we go, 5 choose 5, x to the 0, y to the 5th. So that's the full expansion. And remember how we do exact, we're going to get to it, how we do exact expansions. That will help us with probability and stuff later. We're going to need those as well. So it's important to know how to expand for these. So the first term, 5 choose 0 is 1, y to the 0 is 1. So you're just left with x to the 5th, naturally. 5 choose 1, here, I'm going to look at this row. That's 1. 5 choose 1 is 5, so that's 5 x to the fourth y plus 10 x cubed y squared. That's 5 choose 2. I'll go and take these out as I go as well. 5 choose 3 x squared y cubed. That's 10 as well. Plus 10 x squared y cubed. 5 choose 4 x to the first y to the fourth. 5 choose 4 is 5. Now you could do these in your calculator as well, but if you have that drawn out, you can play with that as well. Uh, plus 1, y, x to the 0, y to the 5th. That's just y to the 5th right there. I'm going to take that out right there. So plus y to the 5th. So those go away right there. And that's your final expansion as you go through. So I'm going to take these out, move this over a little bit. You can go back and look at that if you need to, if you need to rewind. I might remove Pascal's triangle. I'll keep Pascal's triangle. Because I don't want to do all these chooses in my head. Okay, B, but I'm going to move this over. Okay, B, uh, 2C minus 3D to the fourth. couple things here. You have coefficients now within uh, your stuff here. So as you go through, you have to remember that it's not just the number. Like, we're going to choose 4 here, so we're going to look at these. It's not just these numbers that will be in front. You're going to multiply by some degrees here. So I will have to do some calculations. I might need some time for this. So me bragging about all the time I have might not actually be that much time. I start with 4, choose 0. And this, this has to be in parentheses, 2c to the fourth power, negative 3d to the zero power. 
plus 4 choose 1 times 2c cubed. That's a 3. Times neg negative 3d to the first. Plus 4 choose 2. Remember, we should have 5 terms in the end. Times 2c quantity squared times negative 3d quantity squared. Plus 4 choose 3 times 2c quantity to the first power, negative 3d cubed, quantity cubed, plus 4 choose 4, uh, times 2c to the 0 power, times negative 3d to the 4th power, quantity to the 4th power. So uh, all those written out there, I'm going to refer to Pascal's to help me out with some of the chooses. Maybe some you memorize up sometime, or you just kind of work through it, you've done it enough. Um, here we go. I'm going to write down here to start. I'm sure you have less room on your page, but that's okay. Remember this one, this, this becomes 1, this becomes 1 to the 0 power, and you get 2c to the 4th. You have to do 2 to the 4th as well. So that's 16 to the 4th. So I'm going to write it down here first. That's 16c to the 4th. Next one. Uh, you, you might start by writing plus. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have another step in this. Plus, 4 choose 1 is 4. So 4 times 2c cubed is 8. 2c quantity cubed is 8c cubed. Negative 3d to the first is negative 3d. Notice how I'm going to have to multiply that afterwards. Plus, 4 choose 2 is 6. So I have 6 times, uh, take this away, 6 times 2c quantity squared. That's 4c to the fourth. I'm sorry, that's 4c squared. It's 4c squared. Negative 3d quantity squared is positive 9d squared. Okay, you've got to be very careful with the negatives. In fact, what you're going to realize is you're going to have alternating terms be positive, or terms alternate positive and negative sign. So that's going to be something kind of crucial. Uh, plus, 4 choose 3, well wait, 4, four choose 3 is a 4. 4 times, um, where are we, 4 choose 3? 2c, raised to the first is 2c, negative 3d cubed is negative 27d cubed. Plus, 4 choose 4 is 1, and then 2c to the 0, that's a 0. 2c to the 0 is 1, negative 3d to the 4th is 80, positive 81d to the 4th. That should be a 4. Okay. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to move that one up, and I'm going to write my final answer to help you out a little bit. Now suddenly I have 20 minutes left, and all the time I said I have, I just lost. Uh, so that'll equal, use a different color here, 16c to the 4th plus, let's see, four, uh, well, minus, actually, 16c to the 4th minus 32, negative 96, minus 96c cubed d plus 6 times 20, 24 times 9, here, I don't want to be, I think it's 216, but, okay, 216, c squared, d squared, minus 4 times 8, 8 times tw negative 27 is 1, two, 216 again, I think. Yeah, 216 minus 216, I think that's a coincidence, c, d cubed, plus 81, d to the fourth. That's your final answer right there on that one. So a lot, a lot to have had on that, obviously, a lot to do. Big expansions. Will you have that on the test? I don't know. I haven't seen it. Couldn't tell you. Wouldn't tell you. Uh, I'd say expect to know how to do it. You have to know how to expand to, to do these next ones. These ones are very important for that. Because you, uh, you have to know what term you're on. You, do you have to write the expansion? No. Is it a time killer? Yeah, a little bit. Find the fifth term of 2a plus 5 to the ninth. So I'm going to write this kind of physically, and then I'll kind of, next time I'll do it very mentally. First time... Um, you want to find the fifth term of things. So, for instance, you'd go, like, the first term would have 9 choose 0 in it. Second term would have 9 choose 1. Third term would have 9 choose 2. Fourth term would have 9 choose 3. Fifth term would have 9 choose 4. So I know that in the very beginning of this thing, this will be 9 choose 4. Okay, next thing, looking at my two a's, my first term would have been 2a to the ninth power. Second term would have been 2a to the eighth. Third term would have been 2a to the seventh. Fourth term would have been 2a to the sixth. The fifth term is 2a to the fifth power. 
So notice how, like, I'm not expanding the entire thing till I get there. I'm just counting them. I'm writing them and counting them off. First term for 5 would have been 5 to the 0 power. Second term would have been 5 to the 1st. Third term would have been 5 squared. Third, fourth term would have been 5 cubed. And fifth term would be 5 to the 4th. Right there. So this is what the fifth term will be. 9 choose 4 times 2a to the 5th times 5 to the 4th. So 9 choose 4 in the calculator is 126. Let me move this a little bit. See, see I don't mind these problems. They're, they're significantly smaller. Uh, this is 126 times uh, 2a to the 5th. That should be 32a to the 5th. And 5 to the 4th is 126, 625. I am not going to do that one in my head. 126 times 32 times 625 is 2,520,000. And don't forget the A to the 5th. That's your final answer there. That's the fifth term in that exp if you expanded it. This one I'm going to do more mentally, and I'm going to take these away now. Ooh, never mind. The seventh is right there. I'm going to keep that. Keep the seventh. Ah, that was 35. Hey, where did they go? Excuse me. Let's try that again. Hey, what's it doing? <laughs> okay, I'll keep it there. Third term. Third term. First term would be 7 choose 0. Second term, 7 choose 1. Third term, 7 choose 2. 7 choose 2 is 21, right? 7 choose 0, 7 choose 1, 7 choose 2. This is 21. Next guy would be would have been four the uh, first term four a to the seventh, then four a to the sixth. Third term is four a to the fifth. That's four a quantity to the fifth. Negative b would have been negative b to the zero for the first term. Negative b to the first for the second term. Negative b cubed or negative b squared for the third term. This will be the term itself. Now we got to multiply twenty one times oh not times four four to the fifth. Is that two? No, 256 times 4, 1,024, 1, I think. Let's try that. 4 to the 5th is 1,024. So I'm going to do 21 times 1,024 a to the 5th times b, positive b squared. Right? Now that you've squared a negative b, it's positive b squared. 21 times 1,024, whoops, 1,024 is 20. Hang on, I got a text. I'm going to have to check things for softball. Uh, two one five zero oh, four a to the fifth b squared. That is your final answer. As you let that soak in, let me quickly see what this text is about. Okay. Hang on, I gotta get something dropped off. One sec, guys. All right. Um, finishing text. Cool. Okay. Uh, number thirteen. Got 14 minutes. Number 13, find the pr each probability that a family has that has six children will have at least three boys. So at least three boys means three or four or five or six. If you want to do the opposite way, you can be not zero or one or two. If it takes one less calculation for you to do it, always go for it if you'd like. So I'm going to find probability of exactly 0, probability of exactly 1, probability of exactly 2, add them, and then do 1 minus that. Because if the probability of all of these, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, add up to 1, and I'm trying to find 3, 4, 5, and 6, and I want to do, hang on a second, and, um, and I want to do exactly, um, I'm sorry, uh, um, I lost my train of thought. The person who I texted had, I was talking to them through the door. Um, I can do 1 minus exactly these guys to get the probability 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So I'm going to do 6 choose 0 boys, right? Uh, the probability of having a boy, I guess, is half. So 0.5 to the 0 power times 0.5 of not having a boy, which is having a girl, it, to the 6 power. Plus 6 choose 1. That's 0 0.5 to the first power, uh, 0 0.5 to the fifth power for having the girl, plus 6 choose 2, that's 0 0.5 squared, 
0.5 to the fourth. I'm going to add those up first. This will be the probability of having at most two boys. And then I'm going to do 100% minus that. 6 choose 0 is 1. 0 0.5 to the 0 is 1. So 0 0.5 to the sixth is 0 0.0. Ooh, 0 0.015625. That's for 1. Uh, 6 choose 1 is 6 times 0 0.5 to the first times, well, you know, this is 0.5 to the sixth once again. Right? All these will be 0.5 to the sixth. So, so 0 0.9, 0 0.09375 plus last one, 6 choose 2. I don't even know what 6 choose 2 is. 15. 15 times 0.5 squared times 0 0.5 to the fourth, which is also 0.5 to the sixth. That'll be 0.23 or 375. You know what? Suddenly when I was saying I had a lot of time, I don't think I have a lot of time anymore. Equals 0 0.09375015625. So that equals 0.34375. Now, I have that number. I w so that's for that's for at most two boys. At least three boys will be 1 minus this number. Right? To get at least the other. Make sure that that makes sense because the whole idea about binomial this and that is that you want to say that your probabilities all add up to one in the end. 65.6% uh, about that. I'm going to circle that one but you can get that answer as well. So your answer is 65.6% for A, at least three boys. And this one has a lot more work than you'd expect. Um, the idea, you know, like I said, is that is that you want to know that in binomial conditions, we expand something and we know that it adds up to 1 because in binomial probability, you're looking at um, success versus failure. And your probability of succeeding or failing is 100%, right? Either you'll succeed or you'll fail. You can't get in between that. Okay, exactly two girls. Exactly two girls will be 6 choose 2, whoops, times 0.5 squared. 0.5 to the fourth. Um, I don't. Do I still have that number? Was that the 0.23? No, that was the other one. Was this one? I. Yeah, was this 0.23? I hope it was 4375 because I don't want to calculate it again. I think it was that one right there. Uh, at most four girls. So at most four girls is four or three or two or one or zero. Once again, I want to do not five or six girls. Because that'll be the shorter calculation. All I have to do here is 6 choose 5 times 0 0.5 to the 5th times 0 0.5 to the 1st plus 6 choose 6 times 0 0.5 to the 6th times 0 0.5 to the 0 power. That's a 0. And then I'm going to do 1 minus that number. So 6 choose 5, I think it's 6. So 6 times 0 0.5 to the 6th plus 0.5 So this number will be 1 minus, this will be 0 0.109375. So I'm going to do 1 minus that to get at most 4 girls, and I get 0 0.890625, which is about 89% chance that I'll have at most, 89.1% chance I'll have at most four girls. Right? Having five or six girls when there's a 50-50 chance is lower. It's around 11%. And that makes sense, you know. You look back at this stuff and you're like, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, eight minutes left. See what I got. At a college, 53% of students received financial aid. I, a random group, I think in, in a random group of nine students, what's the probability exactly five of them received financial aid? So we're looking at probability of success to be 0.53. Probability of failure, that's a Q, is 1 minus 0.53, which is 0.47. Okay. Um, so the probability of success, if there are nine students, we want to choose five getting receiving financial aid. And this should be a higher number than any of the others, right? That five out of nine is closest to 53%. So probability of success, raised to the fifth power, five of them. Probability of failure, four of them, right? Five succeed, four fail. 
and I'm not saying failure or success, right? The idea is desired outcomes. Nine choose five is 126. Uh, point five, three, whoops, point five three to the fifth power is a big number. You know what? I'm just going to write this as one thing. Uh, times one twenty six times it's an irrational. It's not irrational, but it's um, it's very big. Point four seven to the fourth. So this ends up being point two about point two five seven or about twenty five. 0.7%, right? Now, this is exactly 5, and that's a very high percentage for being exactly 5. Out of the 10 possible things you can have, 0 through 9, that's a pretty high percentage of that. A quarter of the time, exactly 5 would receive financial aid. Okay, here are the last... F oh, gosh, we still have more. I'll keep going. Permutation. How many ways can you arrange five letters three at a time? I think we had this exact question. So this is... Hey, hello. There we go. So this is 5, pick 3. Um, this thing, you have five letters to choose from, you want to rearrange them different order and stuff like that. And, you know, you want, to, you want to rearrange. I think that's the idea. I think the idea is different arrangements. So it's five factorial over two factorial. Five times four times three is uh, 60. How many committees of four students can be made from 16 students? Again, order doesn't matter. 16 choose four. Uh, 1820. Different ways. How many ways can five students be seated in five chairs? It's five pick five or 5 factorial, or 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 1, 2, 6, 24, 120. All right. Final ones, 18, I don't think there is a 19. 18, 20, and 21. How many different four-digit numbers can be made from the digits 1, 2, 6, 8, and 9, no repeats? So, different four-digit numbers, right? So order matters. You have five numbers to choose from. Right, so right, so the idea of no repeats is one times one times or one 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 stuff. So you can't do that. So once you choose a number, it goes down. That's why we get to do permutation. Five numbers, you pick four. Or you could literally do five times four times three times. Um, yeah, five five times four times three times two. Five, pick four. It's one hundred twenty. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, a committee of four is to be selected from a group of nine men and seven women. What is the probability that two men are selected and two women are selected? So besides the fact that we're just doing, you know, once again, this is like the other one before, nine choose two and seven choose two for the women, right? How many, how many different ways can you arrange these men? How many, excuse me, how many different ways can you or pick these, choose these women and men? Okay, we're going to get that number first. But they're asking for probability here. Okay, so 9 choose 2 times 7 choose 2 is 756. There's 756 ways those guys can be selected. This is out of how many different ways you can select four people. It doesn't matter who they are. So there are 16 people total, 9 plus 7, and you can choose four of them. So we want to see what the probability that two men and two women are selected. You want to find all the different ways two men and two women can be selected. You want to find out how many different ways four men and women can be selected out of 16. So I'm going to do 16, choose four. That's 1820. So 756 over 1820. So we're going to do that division there. Oops, second answer. So it's about 0 0.415, about 41.5%. Okay, so it's a pretty big probability still. Last one, three minutes. A card is chosen from a standard deck of 52. What is the probability that a card is a face card or a heart? Face card. There are um, jacks, queens, and kings, four of each. There are 12 out of 52. Boom. Heart. There are 13, I believe. 13 out of 52. Four of them are, no, three of them are face, jack of hearts, queen of hearts, and king of hearts. You take those away because they are being added twice. That's 22 out of 52 or 11 out of 26. If you reduce that, I'd ask you to probably reduce that. And a 9 or a black card. A 9, there are 4 of them out of 52. Black card, there are 26 out of 52. And there are 2 9s. There's a 9 of clubs and a 9 of spades that you have to take out because they are included twice. That'll be 28 out of 52 or 
let's see, or four, let's see, those divide by four, huh? Seven out of 13. There you go. All right, so see, oh, okay, I finished in time. So there's your practice test. Uh, you are taking, I'm saying you're taking it today, but you, you haven't taken it yet. Uh, you're about to take it. I'd like you to enjoy it, please. And um, yeah, I got to sign off. Good luck.